Now I can finally take a look at the dial pointer lamp again. I actually have three options open for me now. One of them is this here. This is a little AC to DC mini converter. I think the maximum AC voltage is 22 volts in and it's right at 1 ampere. And over here it's got a little LED so you can see if it's even putting something out. So that's pretty handy. And the left side here is the AC side and DC is the output. And it looks like it has a full wave bridge rectifier here. It's also pretty small and of course it has two screws here so it can be mounted on the chassis. I'm probably not going to use it for this project because I mean I would just be using this for one single LED and it probably seems like a little bit of overkill but since it's rated for one ampere I could probably use it in the future or and let me mention that this thing is actually pretty um, small here it's not even three centimeters long I don't know exactly how uh, for example how uh, wide it is here but again I, I think the length is around three centimeters so definitely that would be a, that's going to be a future option and as I mentioned it's going to be it's pretty easy to mount oh and one thing I do have to mention here is that you still most likely have to use a dropping resistor for example with this Marantz I think it's the 8 volts AC the lamps ran off of so your output is going to be somewhat over 8 volts so you're still going to go ahead and have to use that dropping resistor there so you're going to have to do the math get a resistor and put it in there I just wanted to mention that that you just can't most likely hook it up straight Now I put the converter down into the receiver here and you can see it's actually pretty small and with all the holes here in the Marantz it shouldn't be really difficult to find a spot to mount it to and to reroute the wiring but again as I said I think for my purpose now this is kind of overkill I'm probably not going to go this route. Now here's my second option that is to take two little three millimeter LEDs since they won't fit in the lamp holder they would be too large uh, I would go ahead and have to grind them down somewhat until they fit in there and then probably glue them together and the way I would attach them is anode to cathode and cathode to anode so basically uh, in anti-parallel when one for example would be on the other one will be off we have to remember the input is going to be a sine wave and that's changing direction so when one's on the other one's off and the other way around now I have the LEDs hooked up cathode to anode and anode to cathode so they turn off alternately you can see that nicely here first the one turns on then the other one turns off one turns on the other one turns off I'm feeding in a really low frequency sine wave with my function generator just to show how this basically works here now we'll go ahead and bring it up to line frequency which would be in Europe 50 Hertz or in the United States 60 Hertz so you can take a look you notice it's blinking faster and faster and this for example would be 50 Hertz and this for example would be 60 Hertz and I think if they're really close together if I were to push them really close together I don't know if you could even tell if they were blinking at all so that would be an option to go to and again you'd have to use a dropping resistor again so you have to go either go um, online and figure that out which uh, is really not very difficult I'm not going to show this here right now because I don't have uh, pen and paper at hand here at the moment I'd have to leave the room now oddly enough when I look through the LCD screen of the camera I can see a little bit of flickering and I just right now played back that video sequence of what I did and when I play it back I can see the flickering also but when I look at the LEDs with the naked eye and the camera is not there you really cannot 
you cannot see the flickering. It's almost as if your eye has been tricked into not seeing that. So again, this is a, um, a possible viable solution. Also, uh, I want to add these LEDs I had laying around somewhere, uh, which I found, and they're definitely not bright enough, so I, ca I can't even use these. If not, I would go ahead and throw everything together right now, and I would go ahead and show how it looks. So I'm going to have to get ones that are at least double as bright, but there would still be three millimeters, and of course they're red LEDs. There's just a lot of options out there, even with the even with the colors. Now I have both of the LEDs hooked up anode to anode and cathode to cathode, which is different than the way I did it before. That was anode to cathode and cathode to anode. So, and you can see they're both blinking at the same time. That's what happens there. Of course, this is a really low frequency. We'll bring it up to line frequency. Yep. We'll go up to 50, 60 hertz. Okay, well, let's stop at 50 hertz right here. And at least for me personally, when I look through the uh, screen of the camera, it seems like the flickering is a lot easier to see. Before, it was kind of obscured. I guess because one was LED was turning on, the other one was turning off. Now, if I look, if I don't look through the screen there, if I don't look at the screen, and I look directly at the LEDs, I can't really tell the flicker there either. So, um, I, I, but I would probably go ahead, if I, I would, if I would go with this method, I would hook them up anode to cathode and cathode to anode and not this way, only as a last resort. Now this is method three, this is using a single large red five millimeter LED, which I have file down somewhat so it fits in the little um, reflector protector here I guess I'd call it and that'll fit right in there again if you're just gonna go this route or use like the two LED route you're still gonna have to you're gonna have to use a dropping resistor you cannot get around that so we'll go ahead and hook this up quick I'll get that function generator here and we'll take a look this is Again, this is just a quick mock-up. Now I have the red LED hooked up now. And of course I'm using the function generator again. And if we look at the top here, I can see some, make out some flicker here, but only when I'm looking through the camera lens. Now if I'm looking at directly with the naked eye here, I can't see any flicker at all. And... Now down here, it shows a little bit of flicker too when I'm, I'm using the camera. But once I look at it with the naked eye, I really cannot see that flicker anymore. So this would be probably the easiest route to go. Let me go ahead and um, turn the receiver on and go ahead and look at everything, how everything looks. So now I have the other lights turned on too. And basically this is how it looks, but the camera really doesn't do this justice if I'm looking at it through the screen it doesn't look good at all and if I record it it's probably going to not look good at all either I think it's because I'm using such a cheap camera again with the naked eye this all looks a lot better and I think I can see a tiny bit of flicker by looking at the screen but as I already said a couple times once I Put the camera away and just look at the pointer it looks quite good i can't really make out any flicker so now i'll go ahead and turn the frequency way down so we can get some real flicker well that's kind of a cool effect but i don't think i want to leave it that way so anyway i think this brings this video to a close again you have various different options to go with and at this moment in time I'm probably going to go using the two LED system which is the anode to cathode, cathode to anode or the anti-parallel system I'm going to have to get different 
more brighter LEDs and then I'll go ahead and put them in but this brings this video to a close I just want to give people a general idea of how I went about doing this thanks for watching